Now we present Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X, the Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Here's a word from RCA Victor. Big as life and just as natural. That's the picture you get on RCA Victor's new 19-inch television sets. What a picture that 19-incher is. It's clear, it's sharp, it's steady, because it's locked in place by the exclusive RCA Victor picture synchronizer. It's powerful because behind it are RCA Victor's newest extra rugged television circuits. And it's dependable, with all those matchless qualities of engineering and performance which have made RCA Victor million-proof television the proven pride of over a million American homes. Your RCA Victor dealer will be pleased and proud to introduce you to four models of RCA Victor 19-inch television. The York, a compact, inexpensive table topper. The Hillsdale and the Northampton, two glorious consoles with cabinets so beautiful you'd think the price applied to the cabinets alone. And the Sedgwick, the 19-inch television-radio phonograph combination. When you start on the television way of life, start at the top with RCA Victor Million Proof Television. 19-inch size. It was in 1945 in the concentration camp at Mauthausen, Germany, that the man called X first learned of the existence of the Himmler plates. But it was not until five years later that he heard of them again when a phone call came into the bureau from Uruguay Intelligence in Montevideo. I tell you, Senor Thurston, there can be no mistake. What about the scroll work, Inspector Bezos? Well, there are slight irregularities in the lower left-hand corner. And the serial numbers? The figure four is closed, rather than being open. Thanks for informing us, Inspector. I'll join you in Montevideo in 24 hours. Buenas, Senor Thurston. Hasta la vista. Adios, Inspector. Chief, they've turned up again. Hmm? The Himmler plates. The Himmler plates? Good Lord, Ken. I see you remember them. How could I forget them? Why, those Nazi engraving plates turned out the most perfect counterfeit American $50 bills ever made. That's right. Hitler's gang used millions of dollars worth to buy war materials from neutral nations. But, Ken, we found records stating the plates had been destroyed. What if the records were faked and the Himmler plates were smuggled out of Germany? Well, yeah. if they were, this would be a job for Treasury, not for the Bureau. The inspector says the bills are being passed in Montevideo by a Bureau agent. Hmm? Well, that's impossible. We don't have any men to sign down there. That's right, Chief. Miss Brooks, book passage for Ken Thurston on the first plane from Montevideo, Uruguay. Thanks, Chief. I'll be seeing you. By the way, uh, want me to give your regards to Pagan? Pagan? What's that chiseling crook got to do with this? Oh, didn't I tell you? Our non-existent agent down there is Pagan Zellschmidt. <laughs> I swear by the father of my father, Mr. Thurston. I don't know nothing about those phony Mazumas. I'm innocent as a lamb. Oh, sure. Sure, sure. There, there I was in El Rio del Oro minding my own business when this inspector Brissas put the pinch on me. El Rio del Oro? It is a licensed gambling casino, Senor Thurston. Oh. It was there that these counterfeit bills began to make their appearance. And when Senor Zeltzman attempted to buy chips with some of them, we arrested him. Believe me, Mr. Thurston, this is all subversive uh, anti-American propaganda. They're sorry me because I got an unfilable system. I won that on a roulette. Pagan, you never gamble on anything in your life. Who gambles? I sell the system to my suckers. I, the clients, that is. Did you have to call yourself a bureau agent? Oh, that? <laughs> well, just a case of mistaken identity. <laughs> uh, well, Senor Thurston? Inspector, I'm going to test Pagan's infallible system at El Rio Doro. <laughs> Oh, 
dumb gambling joint, eh, Mr. X? Believe me, Las Vegas is only a hole in the carpet next to this place. A, uh, and, uh, and look at that scenery. Quiet, you idiot. Oh, but I know her, Mr. Thurston. Yes, I do. Her name is Anna. Look, she's coming over now. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know how I do it. Really, I don't. So there you are, Lars, Senor Pagan. I have been desolate waiting for you. Well, that's the way it goes sometimes, my little Kukuracha. Uh, us busy business type executive, you know. <laughs> uh, perhaps I will forgive you then. If you will introduce to me your Americano friend. Friend? What friend? My name's Ken Thurston, senorita. Oh. Well, if you are going to play the wheel tonight, senor Thurston, why do you not join me? I have a strange feeling it would be most fortunate for both of us if you did so. I'd be delighted. Me too, but you But I have a little business to discuss with the cashier first. May I join you later? But certainly. At the second wheel to the right. Second wheel to the right. Bueno. Until later then, senor Thurston. Oh, you bet, you bet. We'll see you later, Mr. Thurston. Now, like I was saying, my little... Uh, could you change these $100 bills for me, please? But of course, senor. In pesos? Oh, American dollars, 50s. I regret, but we do not have any on hand at the moment. Perhaps 20s or 10s? 50s will do. And the next time, close your cash drawer first. Then maybe I won't see them. It is impossible for me to give you those $50 bills, senor. Any other denominations I should be happy to... All right, to... Juan. Give the gentleman what he wants. But, senorita... Let him see? have the 50s. There you are, senor. Thanks, Miss Wilson. Some Americans seem to have more pull around here than I have. I own this place. Well, well, that's a partial explanation. You can have the rest of it in my office if you'll wait till you get in there before you examine those bills, Mr. X. of yours, Pagan, this Senor Thurston. He seems to be a most charming man. Oh, sure, sure. Now, like I was saying, my little Tori Thurston... Uh, I... What business did you say he was in, Pagan? Huh? Business? Whose business? Senor Thurston. Oh, oh, him. Who cares? I just let him follow me around for laughs, you understand? <laughs> now, like I was saying, uh, there's a cozy little nook down the uh, coast. And perhaps I... later, muchacho. But now I feel very lucky for roulette. So be a darling, Pagan. Buy me some chips with these, huh? Hey... This is an American 50. See? Si? Stand right where you are. I'll be back in a couple of jiffies. Bueno. La cucuracha, la cucuracha. Ya no pide caminar. One moment, okay. please, my friend. Huh? I should like a word with you about the money you have in your hand. I got no time to talk about money. I... Hey, 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 that's a gun. You are quite correct, Zell Schmidt. It is a gun. So let us take a little walk, my friend. Right, Thurston? Let's get down to cases. You're snooping in the wrong place for those phony 50s. So get out of my casino and stay out. What are you afraid of, Miss Wilson? Look, I'm doing a big business here. If rumors get around about me paying off in phony bills, I lose my customers. Hmm. That why your cashier hung on to these 50s? That's right. I'm taking no chances on phonies being passed out. To your customers or to me? You've got the bills. Check them. Mm-hmm. I will. Uh. Well? Hmm, they're okay. Oh, please excuse, Miss Wilson. I did not know that you were... What? What? No, it cannot be. You are. You are Ken Thurston. Yes, I... Of course, I could not be mistaken. Do you not remember me, Mr. Thurston? Wait a minute. Warsaw, ah, 1939. You're yeah. Stefan Grabowski. Ah, that is right, Stefan Grabowski. Oh, how good it is to see you again. How good it is. Old friends. <laughs> Mr. Thurston saved my life in Warsaw. Oh, now we meet again. Oh, we have so much to talk about. Some other time, Stefan. We've got business to talk over. Oh? Oh, yeah, yeah, I see so. But would you visit me at my home, Mr. Thurston? Be my guest there. Here. Here's my card. You will be there? Sure, Stefan. Maybe I'll even drop in later tonight. Ah, that would be wonderful, wonderful. Imagine meeting you here after all these years. And we should both have business with Miss Wilson. Hmm, <laughs> quite a coincidence. Maybe not. 
What else could it be? Eleven years ago, Stefan Grabowski was working for the Polish Treasury as an expert engraver. Or didn't you know, Miss Wilson? Your pardon, sir. You are Mr. Thurston. That's right. And Mr. Zellschmidt left a message for you. Oh? He says it is very important that you join him at once. It has something to do with money. If you will follow me, please, I will take you to him. Here we are, Mr. Thurston. He's waiting for you in this car. Oh, now, wait a minute. You will put up your hands, senor, and saquito. And listen to me. I will speak only once. You will make no further effort to contact the one who has the Himmler plates. Furthermore, you will get out of Uruguay within 24 hours. You almost sound as though you mean that. Believe me, I do. Mr. X. Uh. You are feeling better now, Mr. Thurston. Uh, oh. Inspector Brisa. Uh, see, see, see. I, I was entering the parking lot when my lights picked you up. Just what I need right now. I pick you up. Pega. Sure, there was no good knock me subconscious, too. Uh, looks like someone's starting to get a little nervous. You said it. Me. Inspector, I'd like to see if you've got intelligence reports on some people. Bueno, bueno. Who, who are they? Well, it was Stefan Grabowski... And a beautiful blonde named Anna with a weakness for roulette wheels. Anna. A tall, dark, scowling sort of man with a saber scar on one cheek. Saber. And Joan Wilson, owner of El Rio Doro. Saber. I, uh, no investigation will be necessary in the case of Senorita Wilson. I can vouch for her personally. Huh? Uh, si, senor. She happens to be my fiance. My story, Mr. Thurston, Warsaw, concentration camp, Uruguay. You still in the engraving business, Stefan? Ah, I have a tiny little printing shop where I do some novelty engraving. It provides a very poor living, but we are content with it. We? Uh, my wife, oh. Mr. Thurston. I, I met her here, a wonderful person. Even though we are quite poor, there is never one word. Ah, she must be arriving home now. Stefan, darling, have you returned? Yes, yeah, I'm yeah, and I am oh. with a very special guest. <laughs> this is Mr. Ken Thurston. Mr. Thurston, my wife, Anna. How do you do? I am most pleased, Senor Thurston. Oh, oh, but I must apologize for my husband. Apologize, darling? You say that, Senor Thurston is a very special guest, yet you have made no attempt to serve him anything special, not even a drink. You are so right, man. That is an oversight. I shall remedy at once. I will get some herba mate for us. On such an occasion, nothing is too good for our guests. So you are Stefan's wife. Have you told him anything? Anything about seeing me at the casino? How could I? Who'd ever think the wife of a poor engraver could play the wheel at El Rio Doro? Then do not, please do not, I beg of you. I could not stand this poverty, having to count every centavo over and over again before spending it. I, I had a few pesos, gambled them, and, and won. But it would break Stefan's heart if he learned I was not content with the living he makes for us. Oh, are you afraid he might find out that the money came from somewhere else? Ever hear of the Himmler plates, Anna? The Himmler plates? Yeah, that turn out the most perfect counterfeit bills ever made. Counterfeit? Oh, I do not know of any counterfeit... <laughs> Senor! Come on. Talk to me, my darling. Talk to me. Stephen! How is he, Anna? He... He's dead. Why, Stephen, dead? Who could have killed him? Why? Suppose you tell me. Me? But I do not know anything. This $50 bill says otherwise. Fifty dollar bill? Yeah. It was lying over there on the floor near the window. Counterfeit. Printed on the Himmler plates. It's time for the truth, Anna. So talk. 
Now. We will continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. Every day you hear more and more about an incredibly fast way to relieve the pains of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. It's Anacin, A-N-A-C-I-N. Now, the reason Anacin is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anacin is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anacin contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way, discovered the incredibly fast relief anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So, the next time a headache strikes, take anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30, economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Ask for anison at any drug counter. <laughs> Now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. It's time for the truth, Anna. So talk. Now. All right, all right. I will tell you everything. I know everything. Let's start with these $50 bills. What do you know about them? I found them, senor, hidden away in Stefan's printing shop. Huh? See. Si. That is where I get the money to play the wheel, senor, and that is all I know of them all. Except that they were counterfeit. No, no, I swear to you, I did not know that. I know only what I have told you. Oh, now leave me alone, please. Leave me alone. Oh, Stefan, Stefan, what have I done to you, my darling? What have I done? <laughs> Here is Grabowski's printing shop, Senor Torstan. Easy now. Whoever shot Grabowski might be inside. Uh, what is it, Senor? Look here, Inspector. An electrolysis vat. Electrolysis vat? Yeah. It's a way of putting a thin coating of metal over other metal. And here... Some pieces of pure copper. And I bet this stuff's copper sulfate. Does this mean something to you? I don't know. But I got an idea. Senor! Yeah. Someone's in that back room. Come on. Thurston, you see... He's printing money, bills of some kind on that hand press. Yeah. Mind if we take a look at those bills? Huh? Stand where you are, senor, or I fire! What is this? Who are you? You've a pretty short memory. I'm Thurston, the man you slugged out in the parking lot, remember? But of course. This saber scar on the cheek. Yes. Keep him covered while I take a look at this printing job. Well, Senor Thurston? They're engraving plates, all right, Inspector. And these bills are phonies. Aha. Uh -huh. But they were only made for children. Children? Yep. Yeah. Our friend here was printing play money. Toy bills for kids to play with. But I don't understand. Maybe he's got an explanation for us. But of course I have an explanation. My name is Vardas. Anton Vardas. I am Stefan Grabowski's assistant. We are behind in some small orders for these children's money, so I am attempting to get caught up. Stefan will be most pleased when he arrives in the morning. Grabowski is dead. Stefan? Dead? No. No, I, I, I do not believe that. Why not, senor? You killed him, did you not? Me? Kill Stefan? The man I would risk my life for, you must be crazy. Would you risk your life for him or for the Himmler plates? I do not know what you mean. Grabowski was one of the engravers the Nazis forced to make those plates, wasn't he, Vardas? And you figured that after the Allies moved in, Grabowski got away with them. That's what you're after, isn't it? You are right, Mr. Thurston. Uh -huh. Up to a certain point. 
I did suspect Stefan of having those plates. But I was not interested in them. Only in saving Stefan from the consequences of his acts. You are a fool if you expect us to believe that story. Did you not attack Senor Thurston? Wanted to leave the country and forget about those plates? Only to protect Stefan. I wanted time to convince him to turn in the plates to the proper authorities. How do you know who I was, Vardas? And how do you happen to know so much about Grabowski and the plates? Your friend, Mr. Zellschmidt, talks too much, Mr. Uh. Thurston. And as for Stefan, I was at the same concentration camp with him. He saved my life there. Senor Thurston? Let him go, Inspector. As you wish. But you better get some men and tear this shop apart. Find those plates. They've got to be around. It shall be done. And you, senor? I'm going back to the casino to talk to Miss Joan Wilson. May I ask why, senor? Do we not already have a full explanation on this matter? Not quite, Inspector. We don't know who killed Gaboski. And we don't know why the same perfume Joan uses was on that counterfeit bill I found next to his body. I haven't got time to talk to you now, Ken. Why not, Joan? Too busy looking for counterfeit fifties or trying to pass them? We went round and round about that once, didn't we? We didn't go around far enough. Stefan Grabowski interrupted us. Well, he won't interrupt us again. Won't he? He's dead, isn't he? How'd you know about that, Joan? Look, Thurston, there's no sense in our putting on the gloves every time we meet. I think you and I could get along okay together under the proper conditions. Suppose you name him. I will. Come to my party tonight. Party? Yes. I give one every year about this time for some of the people without countries who are living here in Montevideo. I'm one myself, and it makes me feel better to throw a shindig for them. Okay, Joan. I'll be there. Good. It's number 17 El Calle Grande. 17 El Calle Grande. Right. See you later, Ken. Yes. Oh, you? Mr. Thurston. Mr. Thurston. What's all the excitement about Pagan? Boy, did I ever dig up some dirt for you. It's plenty hot stuff, believe me. What did you find out? Well, there's a big foreign agent in town. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And this agent's after something pretty special. I don't know what it is, you understand, but the word's around. I even learned where this big giz is going to be tonight. Yeah, well... Number 17, El Cayo Grande. <laughs> Are you enjoying my little party, Ken? Yeah, it's nice to be among friends so far from home. But I didn't know you were acquainted with Anton Vadas, or with the recently bereaved but now quite gay widow, Anna Grabowski. I know most of the regular customers at my casino. And that still doesn't explain how you knew who I was, or how come you knew of Grabowski's murder. <laughs> what good is a fiancé, darling, if you can't learn things from him? Yeah? Did Visa tell you about the perfumed counterfeit bill I found next to the... Grabowski's body? There's no mystery about that. Stefan had done a little printing job for me. I paid him in cash. That bill must have been with the ones I gave him. You've got all the answers, haven't you, Joan? That's right, Ken. All the answers. Well, Mr. X, your worries are over. Everything's taken care of slick as a thistle. You told all of them? Every mother's one of them. They all think you know where those funny plates are, who has them, and what's going to cook. Good. Now we'll wait for one of them to make a move. <laughs> you don't have to wait. Huh? Yeah, you know that Inspector Brisa's guy? Well, his car drove away just a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> said Inspector Brissas already gave this print shop a once over. What are we here for? To find a killer. Ooh. Hey. Hey, there's nobody home here. There's some light coming from the back room. Sure, but there's no noise. If anybody was home, he'd have to make some noise, wouldn't he? He would... <gasps> Mr. Rex, 
Look who's there. Yes. But but what's going on with that printing press thing? The engraving plates are being removed from the hand press. Plates? Then you mean that's the one we're after? That's right. Hello, Vardas. <laughs> Still trying to catch up on that back order for play money? Or have you finally gotten the big order? From behind the Iron Curtain. What are you talking about? The Himmler plates, Vardas. The ones Grabowski smuggled out of Germany and hung on to, figuring that someday he'd be looked. He'd get a pile of dough for him. Well, with the present mess in the world, the time got ripe, didn't it? Are you crazy, Thurston? I do not understand what you are talking about. The Nazis planned to use that counterfeit money to buy war materials from neutral nations. What one bunch of gangsters could do, so could another. Only Stefan's mistake was in thinking your country would pay him real money for them. Instead, you paid him off in lead. Mr. Rex, you you mean this guy is the one who bumped off Grabowski? There's the proof in his hands, Pagan. Oh. The Himmler plate. Now I know you are crazy. You saw with your own eyes that these engraving plates only printed play money for children. That's what it looked like, yes. But the electrolysis equipment tells the real story. That plus these bottles of etching acid. You were printing that play money with plates made of a thin sheathing of copper over a wax base. But beneath the wax, well protected and intact... That's enough. Uh, Stand where you are, Mr. Rex. Oh, I see it, Pagan. Yes, you are quite right, Thurston. The real Himmler plates are underneath these. Unfortunately, you will never live to see them with your own eyes. I wonder if you will either. Drop that acid, you fool! Okay, Vardas, here. Uh, no! <coughs> uh, you dead! Uh. Boy. Oh, what a smackaroo. Hey, tossing that acid stuff at him sure did a trick, Mr. Rex. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it did. So now... Now we got the counterfeit plates, and those no goods didn't get away with nothing. But that sure was some clever gag of hiding them, eh, Mr. Rex? There's a lesson to be learned from that, Pagan. Yeah? Yeah. Whether it's engraving plates, counterfeit bills, or ideas, they can look legitimate enough, even pass for the real thing. But underneath, they're as phony as they can be. And that's why we've got to be on the watch for them. Always. Or we'll find ourselves winding up with a counterfeit world. Now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, Mr. X goes to Cuba on the trail of five ounces of treason. Just a tiny package that threatens the welfare of the entire world. And boring things up as usual will be Leon Belasco as Pig on Zelschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. It's a Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery and drama, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. Good night. <laughs> The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. In tonight's cast, you heard Joan Banks, Maggie Morley, Will Wright, Stan Waxman, Dawes Butler, and Lou Merrill. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to listen tomorrow evening for The Big Show with Tallulah Bankhead and a great parade of stars, the Sunday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. Now hear your hit parade. Tomorrow it's The Big Show on NBC. NBC.